Sceptile is easily one of my favorite grass type starters, and can you blame me? It's pretty awesome. Today I'm going to be showcasing how powerful Sceptile can be, with its unique unburdened ability doubling its speed when its item is consumed, and strong physical attacks in Leaf Blade, Earthquake, and Acrobatics. You can also boost its attack with Swords Dance, and even further boost its acrobatics power with Terra Flying. The idea is to find an opportunity to set up Psychic Terrain with Ndidi, pop our Psychic Seed when switching into Sceptile, set up a Swords Dance, and then proceed to punch massive holes in the opponent's teams. Let me know your thoughts on this Sceptile moveset in the comment section down below, and stick around until the end for a rental code of the team. So our first game with Sceptile is against Reese from the Pokemon Battle Hub Discord, which you should definitely join if you like to battle in Pokemon. Link is in the description, it's free to join. Anyway, with all that out of the way, let's jump into the first game. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Reese. So they're going to lead off with Sentinel, which is going to be the Gly score as I led off with my Chandelure. So not a bad lead because we can go for a, a trick if we want to and get rid of the Toxic Orb. That's going to be nice. Um, but I feel like we just go for a Fire Blast or a Switch Out. So I think this is not the best lead for us. I do kind of want to just hit Fire Blast. So I think I will just hit Fire Blast, to be honest with you. Um, Fire Blast comes through. It's going to do a lot of damage to the Gly score, that's for sure. Nearly gets the KO, could burn it. They go for a Swords Dance. Oh, lucky that we are Choice Scarf. So that Swords Dance Glide score is not going to work out for them. So now we can just go straight for another Fire Blast, obviously, and it's going to hurt something. They probably go Milotic, but damage is damage at the end of the day. Um, so I'll go for another Fire Blast, and as long as we don't miss, we should be all right. We don't miss, which is nice. Glide score goes down to the Fire Blast from the Chandelure. Um, and that's, that's one for out of the way for uh, Sceptile, which is awesome. Sceptile kind of runs through their team a little bit as well, which is amazing. All right, Tyra comes in. Who's Tyra? My Lotic comes in. I would have just switched that in straight away, but I guess they didn't know what set we were. Oh, well, they, no, they did because we outsped them. Um, so I have no idea what was going on there. But anyway, let's go into leaning towards Indeedee. And then if this thing decides to go for like a Scold, we can like Encore into it. So we'll switch our Shandy. We'll go into Indeedee, of course. Get that Psychic Terrain up, and it's going to be there for a while. Now, this is obviously going to help the Metagross a little bit because it boosts its Psychic-type moves, like Psychic Fangs. But, at the same time, it stops priority moves like Ice Shard and Mark Punch from Pormot and Sand Slash. So, they actually go for a Surf, which is fine. Um, I'm now going to Encore them into that. Encoring them into the Surf is going to be great because it will allow us to get our um, Sceptile in and get a, a, a Surf off. So, um, they go for another Surf. Obviously, it's going to do nearly KOs, but we don't get KO'd, of course. Uh, unless it was a crit, of course. Um, now we just go into Sceptile. I think Sceptile can do this. So we'll go into Sceptile now. I don't think it's too early. I'm looking at the team. I don't think it's too early. So I think Razor can come in now. We're going to get a Spideff boost from the uh, Psychic Seed anyway. Which means we'll take the Surf really well. There we go. Special, F special Defensive Boost right there. And they go for another Surf because they were Encored into it, which is great. It's going to bounce right off us. Yep, bounces right off us. Uh, now we can get it set up a Swords Dance, no problem. And they might switch out here. They may switch out. It is a possibility. Um, but at the same time, we've got a special defense boost. So we don't have to worry about getting KO'd by the freeze drive on the Ninetales. So they withdraw. They don't want to stay in against the Sceptile. Makes a lot of sense. And they're going to go into Fiumi, which is going to be what exactly? The Ninetales. So Ninetales comes in. Now, it's obviously going to get a Snow Warning uh, defense boost from the Snow. We go for a Swords Dance here, and you know what? I'm actually leaning towards just going for um, Terra Flying here. I really am. Because Acrobatics will obviously do a lot more damage. So I think I will do that. I think I'll go for the Terra Flying Acrobatics straight away. And even if we don't sweep the team with the Sceptile, as long as we can do some damage to the key players, we're going to be all right. So we've got the Unburden Boost, which means we are faster than the Alolan Sand Slash in the snow. Still. And we can Earthquake that thing it's part of Steel. Now we just go for an Acrobatics. Let's see how much damage it does to Ninetales at plus two. It doesn't quite get the KO as they go for an Encore. Interesting choice. So they might have thought we were going to sell for Swords Dance again there. Which makes sense. We're going to go for another Acrobatics though. They could easily go into Metagross here, but it's fine. They could also go into Sand Slash, but they decide to stay in and let the Ninetales go down, which is fine. We go for an Acrobatics that's going to take out the Ninetales, uh, which is great. So once the snow is gone, it's gone. Which is great, because that means that Sand Slash is less of a threat. And now Wolvie comes in. Who's Wolvie? Sand Slash. So this thing can take us out of one shot. We want to keep Sceptile around, that's for sure. Um, if we assume they're going to go for an Icicle Crash here, we should switch out into a Loma Mola or the uh, Chandelure. I think I will go with the Chandelure switch. I think that's the best one to go for. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. And as long as we can get the Sceptile back in without the snow, we still outspeed everything on the team pretty much. 
And um, they go for a Swords Dance, which is terrifying. Very terrifying. Very terrifying, because now they're going to go for an Earthquake. But we need to stall out the... Um, we need to stall out the... I'm going to use Zapdos. We need to stall out the Snow, pretty much. And that's how we that's how we win against the Sand Slash. We stall out the Snow, because they're going to go for an Earthquake now, no doubt. If they go for an Icicle Crash, predicting the Zapdos to come in, then fair enough. They do go for an Earthquake, which is great. Hopefully, we don't have to see an um, Icy Rock on the snow. The snow does stop right there, which is fantastic. So, the uh, Psychic Terrain also disappears, which is awesome. So, um, now, I'm going to go for a Volt Switch here. Um, they do decide to Terrestrialize. What type are they going to Terrestrialize into, though? What type, indeed? Water. So, now this thing's weak to Sceptile's Leaf Blades, which is nice. So they have two Water types, which is great. And um, we simply go for a Volt Switch here. That's going to do a lot of damage to the Sand Slash. Actually takes it out in one shot. It's a defensive zap though, so I'll, that's why I'm surprised. Um, but Sand Slash goes down after Terra Watering. Unfortunate Terra right there. They probably expected a Heat Wave. We don't have Heat Wave though on this particular zap dose. Um, which is why I didn't go into it. So what I'm going to do here is I think I'm going to go Sceptile again. So we'll go Sceptile again now. And we'll see what they're going to go into. To counteract our set that probably the Metagross if I had to guess. Megatron comes in. That is going to be the Metagross. Now these things do tend to carry weakness policy. And it could well be the case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into the Indeedee for a start. Just to stop Bullet Punches and Mock Punches. Bullet Punch mainly. And then we'll go for an Encore and whatever. We, we don't live this next attack. Whatever they go for. That's for sure. Heavy Slam. Yeah, we don't live that. Metagross is very heavy, so we don't live that. So, indeed, he comes in. We get the second terrain wreck up, which is awesome. It's not really going to benefit us that much other than priority moves. And uh, the great thing about this is now we can go Shandy and we can bait in that Milotic. So, I'm going to go Shandy now. Good old Chandelure. And we'll go straight for a Fire Blast because, again, it'll bait in the Milotic, but I'm not bothered about that. If they don't switch out... And down goes the uh, Metagross, which is awesome. So Metagross goes down. I guess, in theory, they couldn't really switch into Milotic because if I Energy Balled instead there, that's probably what they were thinking. So Tyra comes in the uh, Milotic because they know we're Choice Scarfed. So they know whatever we lock ourselves into is going to be the key to everything. So what we're going to do now is um, I don't see any reason not to go into Sceptile. But I don't see any reason to keep Shandy alive. So I'm going to go for a Fire Blast. We miss. I wanted to just get some damage off. Um, as they go for an Ice Beam, predicting the Sceptile to come in. But now I'm sacking off Chandelure at this point. As we get frozen, which is hilarious. <laughs> so now they're going to go for a Surf, right? I say it's hilarious because Chandelure is literally on fire. So seeing it frozen like that is really funny. They go for another Ice Beam there. That's going to definitely sting a little bit. Um, nothing too drastic. I'm just going to stay in and let Chandelure go down at this point. So now, hopefully they go for a Surf this time. As now they do go for a Surf. That should take us out, right? It does take us out. So, Chandelure goes down. We don't need Chandelure to win this game. That's for sure. I can't remember whether Palma outspeeds or not, actually. Um, so, it might do. It might do. So, Razor comes in. Like so. Ice Beam will sting us, but it won't KO us. So, I'm going to go for a Swords Dance here. There we go. Swords Dance comes through. In the face of a Milotic. And as long as they freeze us again, we should be alright. Ice Beam comes through. Doesn't KO us, of course. Doesn't freeze us, luckily. We go for a Leaf Blade here, and that should take them out. As long as they're not Rocky Helmet, we should be fine. I guess they could be Rocky Helmet, but they're not, though. They're not, though. So now, all we've got left is Paul Mark. Paul Mark cannot Mac Punch us, um, which leads me to believe it can't KO us. Unless it is faster. I'm, I'm struggling to remember Paul Mark's speed tier. Um, I know we're adamant, so we probably don't outspeed. But I'm going to go for an uh, Earthquake anyway. They go for a Double Shock. Removing their electric typing, which is awesome. However, this does mean they cannot go for a double shock again. And if that's their only electric type move, then so be it. So the Sceptile goes down. Sceptile goes down. They use up all their electricity. And we simply have to go into something to take on this thing. And, and I can think of no greater Pokemon than the Pokemon that hasn't been used there. Which is going to be the Great Tusk. So Great Tusk comes in now. We get the booster energy and attack. Like so. And now we just go straight for a headlong rush. And now if they are focused Sash, which they could be, I guess, um, we might not take down this poor mods, And they might KO us with close combat. But they go for a double shock again. It doesn't work, obviously. So I'm guessing they're banded. And uh, we just go for a headlong rush. 
And down goes the poor Mart. So that was a great game. I enjoyed that one. Uh, the terror... <laughs> The Terra Water on the other one was funny because I, I guarantee they thought we would go for a heat wave there, but no, no, we weren't going to go for a heat wave. Anyway, GG Reese. Well, GG Reese, really fun game. Sceptile really showed us what it was made of in that one. Great play on coring us into acrobatics, though. That was really good. The next game is against Dr. Banana Man and his powerful Hitmon Lee team. Two unburdened users pitted against each other. Who do you think will win this one? Let me know. So, without further ado, let's jump into the second and final game with Sceptile. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Dr. Banana Man. So, they lead off with Pelipper as I expected. Nice and shiny. Didn't expect that one. We lead off with Zapdos. This is a great lead for us. So, they're probably going to go Quagsire, if anything. Um, so, I could predict that. But, I'm just going to go for the Vault Switch anyway and see what kind of player they're going to be. So, they go for a Protect. So, that's that's fine. They're going to Protect see what we're going to do. Um, let's go for a Vault Switch real quick. And just, you know, Protect is going to Protect that, obviously. Um, right, so. So. They're probably going to Quagsire now. But I'm still going to go for a Volt Switch. They do withdraw the Pelipper. Are they going to go into the Quagsire? Or are they going to go into the Meloetta if it's a Soul Vest? Quagsire. Okay, so Quagsire comes in. Good play. Nice and shiny. Got to love it. We go for a Volt Switch. Obviously, it doesn't work on the Quagsire. So, if we assume they're going to go for a Stealth Rock here, we should go into Sceptile. I think Sceptile's a great switch. Um, so, we'll bring Sceptile in now. Sceptile resists both stabs. Um, I don't think Quagsire gets Scold, but if it does, I don't think they would use that against Zapdos. So we'll go into Sceptile now, nice and shiny, you gotta love it. They do go for the Stealth Rocks as expected, so that's great. That's absolutely great. So, now, we'll go straight for a Leaf Blade. I don't see any reason not to. So I will go for a Leaf Blade here, because we can definitely take out this Quagsire. Provided they don't switch out into something that resists, like Haxorus. Um, which it looks like they haven't. They're going to Pelipper. So Pelipper's going to come in. Nice and shiny. We go for a Leaf Blade. That's going to still sting a little bit. Now, they wouldn't go for a Protect here because we could easily Swords Dance. So I think our best bet is going to be Zapdos. So I'm going to go into Zapdos now. And instead of firing off a Volt Switch, we'll ha fire off a Hurricane instead. That way we can do some damage to the Quagsire if they need to. So Fundarger comes in. They do go for a Hurricane, which is great. That's going to be resisted. No damage, pretty much. And um, the rain is going to stop, which is great. Um, but kind of bad because the Hurricane's now got a chance to miss. I was hoping they'd be Damp Rock, but they're not. Let's go for a Volt Switch because they're probably going to go for a Protect. Yeah, Protect comes through. There we go. We try and go for a Volt Switch. They see we don't have leftovers. They might think we're choice or something. So what we'll do now is, if we assume they're going to go for a Quagsire switch again, we'll go for a Sceptile hard switch. So let's go for a Sceptile switch now. So we'll withdraw Zapdos. And we're going to Sceptile once again. Good old Razor. There we go, nice and shiny. Stones do dig in. And uh, they do withdraw the Pelipper probably to go into the Quagsire, which is great. So we read them like a book there. Um, but they actually bring in Haxorus. Which is kind of scary. Not going to lie. It's kind of scary because they could have first impression. So if we if we have to assume they have first impression. So we'll go back into Zapdos now. And we'll try and Thunder Wave this thing. Pretty much. Um, but we, well, we might not need to. Because if they, if they first impression or something. The Dragon Claw. That's going to sting a little bit, but not too much. No static. We go for a Roost now all the time. They go for another Dragon Claw, we should live that. We do barely. We get a Roost off, which is nice, gonna get some health back. There we go. So now, I'm leaning towards going for a switch um, into something else. I'm leaning towards a Loma Mola. I think I will go a Loma Mola. They withdraw Haxorus anyway, which is great. And they're gonna go into Quagsire once again. So Quagsire's a good switch. Hard walls the uh, Zapdos pretty much. Um, but it doesn't do that for Aloma Mola. And I'm pretty confident this will be unaware. Because they usually are. If not unaware, then we're kind of... When it's water absorb, then we're going to be boned by doing this. But I'm going to go for a flip turn anyway. Flip turn comes through. They are unaware, which is good to know. Um, and now we can assume they're probably going to go for a Toxic, right? So if we go into what can we what, what what doesn't care about toxic? Probably Shandy. I don't think they go for an earthquake. 
And even if they did, we should be able to live. Even after the stealth frogs. The stealth frogs dig in. They do go for a toxic. I'm not bothered about Chandelure being toxic. What I am bothered about is the fact that we now hit everything except from the Haxorus neutrally or super effectively for, with an energy ball. That's that's the main thing I'm looking at right now. So um, I also want to go for a trick potentially. So let's go for an energy ball first. They do withdraw the Quagsire. What are they going to go into though? Pelipper? That's fine. Get the rain up all you want. Get your rain up all you want. So they get the drizzle up. And energy ball is going to come through. Taking out the Pelipper, which is fantastic. So we get we claim the soul of the Pelipper, which is nice. I'm still pretty confident Sceptal can win this for us. We just need the right opportunity. And I think Greedent might be that. Haxorus comes in. Once again. Probably going to go for a Dragon Dance if I had to guess. Or an Earthquake. One of the two. So I think our best bet is going to be going to a Mo Loma Mola again. Or for the first time, actually. Uh, Aloma Mola has not seen this Haxorus yet. So let's go Aloma Mola now. Nice and shiny. Stones dig in. And uh, they go for a Dragon Claw, which is going to sting a little bit. Not too much. This tells me they might be banded. They might be banded. Let's go for a flip turn anyway. Because they're going to withdraw. They do withdraw. Um, are they going to go Quagsire? Hitmonlee. Interesting. So Hitmonlee is an interesting Pokemon because it's kind of similar to Sceptile in that it runs the Unburdened stuff. That flip turn did a lot of damage. I'm not going to lie. That's a, that's a lot of damage from a Loma Mola right there. Um, so that's the rain working against them. So I'm going to go into um, Indeedee. And the reason being is because these things like to carry Normal Gem with Fake Out. Sometimes White Herb with Close Combat, but normally uh, Fake Out with uh, Normal Gem. So we're going Indeedee first. And then knowing they either have to switch out here because of the incoming expanding force. Um, I'm, I'm wanna go in, um, they're going to go and they probably go into a Meloetta. Or Greedent. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into my Sceptile now. So we withdraw. And like I said, I'm going to go into Sceptile now. I don't think they'll let the Hitmon Lee go down just yet. We're nice and shiny though, gotta love it. Stones do dig in. And we get that Psychic Seed, which is great, which is gonna boost our special defense. Like so. They go for an Endure. Which is very interesting. So I think my best bet here is Acrobatics. Or Swords Dance. If they go for I'm gonna tear a flying Swords Dance right now. They withdraw the Hitmonlee. And they go into Greedent the Furious. Nice and shiny as well. I haven't seen Greedent in this game before. It looks really cool. They got the fur texture of Spawn for it, I think. So we're going to go ahead and Terrestrialize into a Flying type. This is going to add some extra power to our Acrobatics after the Swords Dance. And I think Sceptile sweeps from here. I could be wrong, but I think Sceptile sweeps from here. So we go for a Swords Dance like so. Boosting our attack to a sky high levels. The rain is going to stop, but that doesn't matter. And I'm going to go for an Acrobatics. I, I really don't see the reason not to. Acrobatics should do a lot of damage to the Greedent. Might even KO it. Nearly gets the job done. Greedent's quite bulky, though. As they are going to reveal they have a Berry, which is going to boost their stats. It's going to boost their defense. And then they're going to get Cheek Pouch, which is going to restore some of the HP. And then they use Stuffed Cheeks, but it fails. Unfortunate. That I I can see where you're going with the strat for Greedent there, but it's not going to work against this Sceptile, I'm afraid. Because the damage output is just too high. As Greedent goes down to an Acrobatics, we're looking pretty good. So Greedent goes down. Quagsire comes in. So Quagsire is an interesting one to bring in here. This tells me they're going to Terra for a start. Also, because they probably because of the Unaware. What type would they Terra into? If they want to resist Acrobatics, they're probably type Steel, right? So we should go for an Earthquake here. They do terrestrialize. What type are they going to go for? Steel? Ideally steel. Because then we can hit it for super effective damage of Earthquake. Or fire. Fire works. <laughs> fire works as well. Fire definitely works as well because Earthquake is still going to be super effective. We go for the Earthquake predicting the Terror. Great, great read on my behalf. Not going to lie. And um, does a lot of damage. They go for a Toxic. Which is unfortunate. 
But you know what? It's not the end of the world. It is not the end of the world right now. Um, because Earthquake... What does Acrobatics do, do more? Super effective Earthquake or Terra boosted Acrobatics with no item. I don't think Earthquake KOs anyway, so we may as well test it out and see what the higher damage output is. I think Earthquake does more. They go for a recover anyway. So they're going to Toxic Stall my uh, Sceptile, which is fair enough. If that works for you, that works for you. We're going to preserve Sceptile now. Because it still outspeeds the Hitmonlee at the end of the day. And we can Healing Wish as well. So I think knowing that, um, we're better off going into Great Tusk here. Great Tusk Protosynthesis. So if you didn't know, Protosynthesis boosts, like attack and stuff, aren't ignored by unaware. So we're still going to get a nice Protosynthesis boosted headlong rush off on something here. And whoever it is, is going to go down. They go for another recover, that's fine. Like I said, we can Healing Wish our um, Indeedee into... Uh, into Sceptile straight away anyway. Psychic Train does disappear as well, which is great timing. So let's go for a Headlong Rush. It's going to hurt something on the team. Headlong Rush comes through. Quagsire goes down. No problems there. But it does lower our defenses. So now we're susceptible to the Hitmonlee potentially or the Hagtris. Hagtris is the main one I'm looking at. So um, Quagsire goes down, which is fantastic. And now Sceptile does really well. Meloetta the Cherish comes in. Nice. Nice and shiny as well. Oh, I, I forgot about the shiny one. And um, what we'll do here is we'll go in DD and we'll Healing Wish. We'll get the Psychic Terrain up, yes. But at the end of the day, it's not really the end of the world. So we'll go Butler now. And we have got Encore. So if they set up Calm Minds here, we can just Healing Wish straight into Sceptile, set up Swords Dance, and go from there. So they go for a Relic Song. Ooh, I love the Relic Song set. It might even put us to sleep. It doesn't know this is gas great. So they go into the pirouette form. Um, but now they are weak to psychic. However, they will KO us here. So we have to be very careful. I think I'm going to go into Zapdos to try and get the static. I think that's the way we've got to go with this. Because pirouette form is always physical. Usually. So if we can get the static, that'd be great. There's the U-turn. We do get the static, which is nice. That's going to really work out for us. Uh, Meloetta goes back. And now they probably bring Haxorus in if I had to guess. So Haxorus comes in now. Nice and shiny. Gets that Mold Breaker. I don't know whether that makes it ignore stack or not. I'm going to go for a Thunder Wave here just because. They go for a Dragon Claw. They probably take us out anyway. We, we lived. We lived. So we get the Thunder Wave off which is nice. Maybe I should have Volt switched into Indeedy there. To not waste any more turns. Let's go for a Hurricane and try and hit that. There we go. Hurricane comes through. Nice amount of damage to the Haxorus. We actually confuse it, which is great. Absolutely great. So with Haxorus confused. They go for a Dragon Claw still. It's going to break through. So Dragon Claw breaks through. And Fundaga does unfortunately go down. However, however... We're in a good position because the Pirouette form is... Um, we go into Indeedee here every single time and we just Healing Wish into Sceptile. Sceptile can finish this game off now. Now that the Haxorus is weakened, we don't need a Swords Dance. We don't need a Swords Dance. So we go for a Healing Wish here every single time. There we go. Healing Wish comes through. KOing my Butler in return. But it's fine because they go for the Dragon Claw and it fails. Well, they might do. They might bring up Breakthrough Confusion. Um, they couldn't move because they are paralyzed. It doesn't matter because they wouldn't have attacked anything anyway because nothing's on the field. Now we go into Sceptile, get ourselves all fully healed. So Razor comes in now. There we go, Sceptile comes through. We get that Healing Wish. That's Indeedee supporting the Sceptile really well there. And it's going to get rid of our Toxic as well, which is great. There we go, Cure of our Poisoning. So the Stone's dug into us now. We go for an Acrobatics 100% of the time here. Because unfortunately we are weak to Earth Stones with being a flying type. So Hacks just goes down. And Pirouette for Meloet is paralyzed. So we know that's going to go down. And Hitmonlee is a fighting type that's slower than Sceptile. So we know that's going to go down as well. Hopefully. Hopefully it goes down like that. <laughs> Meloet comes in though. Oh, it's not in his Pirouette form. Oh, I forgot it changed when it switched out. 
That's unfortunate. So, they could hit us with a, um, a pretty strong move here. So, I'm going to go for an acrobatics anyway. Because it should still two-shot them. It should still two-shot them. It does two-shot them. As they go for their Relic Song once again, this is going to make them weak to it, but it could put us to sleep, which is the main problem. It does put us to sleep. That's annoying. So they are going to get put into their pirouette form right now. So it looks like Septal isn't finishing this game up. We'll try though. We'll go for an acrobatics anyway. Um, obviously we're going to be at first turn guaranteed sleep. Um, but they might get fully paralyzed. They go for a close combat though. That's going to take us out unfortunately. Does however lower their defenses. Which is going to be really uh, crucial here. So this game is still not over. This game is still not over. That's what I'm trying to say. So Septile does unfortunately go down there. But it would have... One is the game if it wasn't put to sleep by Relic Song, but there is a good chance of Relic Song putting things to sleep. So um, now we've got a couple of options here. We can go Great Tusk. Um, I am thinking Great Tusk finishes the game off, to be honest with you, with Headlong Rush. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. Stones do dig in, which is unfortunate, but it's whatever. And we just go for Headlong Rush. Like I said, no reason not to. It's going to KO that Mellow no problem. Does lower our defenses, though, which makes the him on Lee a bit more scary. However, I don't think we have to worry about it because A, we've got Aloma Mola in the back, which can play rough it. They've already terrored, so they can't surprise terror up Aloma Mola with a fa uh, fairy resist. So Hitmonlee the sociable comes in. Nice and shiny, gotta love it. And uh, we go for a headlong rush here every single time. They go for an endure. We saw this earlier, I, I forgot about it. Are they gonna be a berry? I think they're a berry, aren't they? Salic berry or lychee berry? Probably lychee berry. If I had to guess. Yeah, lychee berry. Or is it lychee berry? I can never remember. Let's end this with a rapid spin, though, because I'm pretty confident we can live a reversal. I could be wrong. I am wrong. Dead wrong. Dead, dead, dead wrong. But you know what? They can't reversal a chandelier. And I'm pretty confident Aloma Mola can live a reversal. But we'll have to try and see. Uh, Hitmonlee might actually reverse sweep us here, which would be hilarious if it did. Would be hilarious if they did do that. So we'll go for a flip turn here. They do go for the reversal. Is it going to take us out? It does take... It does take us out. Chandelure, can you do this for us? You're poisoned and you're about to die. They've sh they can't reversal us at least, but they probably have Earthquake, right? So let's go for a Shadow Ball, find out. Sucker Punch. Even better. That him on Lee just reversed. That was the best comeback I've seen in a while. That's going in the video. I don't care. I don't care that we lost. That's going in the video. Septile did really well this game, so you know what? Screw it. That was a really good battle. I like that one. Well, that's the lot. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate your time. Feel free to use the team using the code on screen now. And there's also a Pokey Paste in the description if you want to edit it at all. And with that being said, I'll catch you all in the next battle.